So like I said, when you are at a crossroad, what do you do? When I get you upset, at that moment, what, are you like Job or you're like Moses? When you are afraid at that moment, what decision do you get upset and do things that are not supposed to be done? Do you turn your, 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 your back away from God? Do you get upset at God and do things your own way? When you are at a crossroad, what do you do? Moses and Job, both of them were at a crossroad. And at that time, they made different decisions. Let's look at Exodus chapter 17, verse 6. So we're going to read a lot of scriptures. So be open your Bible and we'll keep reading and reading. Amen. Because we're searching the word of the Lord. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in horror. And thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Mesa and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel. And because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Even when the children of Israel, they came, they tempted the Lord, and they came to Moses. Moses went to the Lord and followed the instructions of God. He says, smite the rock. You know, how many times have people tried your faith? How many times have you been tempted? You know, I poke hands in your eyes, and I'm saying, that brother or sister, look at, look at him or her. Look at the head. The person is even useless. You know, school, nothing. Work, lazy. Coming to church late. And look at the him or her. They are boasting because they think they have something. How many of those times have hands been poked in your eyes? You've been agitated. Or you've come at a crossroad that you think you're losing something. What have you done? Have you followed the instruction of God? Or have you decided to follow your own instruction? We see here from the beginning, Moses followed the instructions of God. Amen? When the temptations, you come at the crossroad, you follow, the, you follow God. And then boom, something comes that is so hard for you. on everything that you say every day the best way to live your life is before you know before you go to bed you count you recount the day you open the diary of the day and look at it and say what have I said to that person what have I done there and then you talk to the father in heaven amen at the beginning Moses did what he followed the instructions of God when he was at the crossroad it says the children of Israel did what? They were angry. They called the play. You know, they were angry because they tempted God. You know, have you been at a crossroad in your life? Whether it be at work. I have been in situations whereby, you know, people who are supposed to report to me have screamed at me. You know, one of the a young person who reports to me, he came to me, he said, even when they were screaming at you and saying all things, you kept your cool. When you're at a crossroad, you know, the reason why it is important that you read the Bible, because it teaches you the word. It teaches you the word so that when the temptations start to come, when the bullets start to come, you open and bring out the shield. Say, help me, Lord. You know, the name of Jesus calms you down. When you're at the crossroad, at the beginning, Moses decided to follow the instructions of God. Let's see what happened after then. Let's look at the book of Numbers. So today somebody offends you. 
You get at the crossroad, you do the right thing. When it continues, what do you do? When it continues, what was the reaction of Moses? We'll start from verse 2, Numbers chapter 20, verse 2. And there was no water for the congregation, just like it happened earlier on, as we read in the book of Exodus. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chored with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? What? You know, somebody comes to you and is saying, This God that you're full, they're asking you to do some shady business. And they're saying, You're suffering. You're, you're, it's very difficult to make ends meet. You know, like the pastor preached, he said, make a list. Do you borrow money every day to buy food? Do you borrow money to do everything? You are at a crossroad. It is very, very difficult. You know, at the bad situations, but he had a question, so do you want us to die before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle die there? You know, you have been asked, should you suffer? That's an easy way out. This is how to do it. Everybody does it. Are you saying that, well, no, I'm going to be transparent because no matter what? Or are you saying, well, well, since everybody does it, I would do it. And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. So they are poking Moses' eyes. When situations are poking your eyes, when somebody is coming all the time, you know, you stand up and say, this brother or sister is always looking for my trouble. Always looking for my trouble. Always. I'm getting ticked off. Or oh, that co-worker at work. All the time. Doesn't like me. You are at a crossroad. It's the same. They are poking the eye of Moses. Hands in the eyes. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly. Is that what you do? Do you step aside? Do you say, Father, Lord in heaven, take control? Unto the door of the tab tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Is that what you do? In the moment, you're saying, you're standing before there, you're quiet, and the person keeps talking. You're saying, Father, Lord in heaven, your eyes are not closed, but you're praying in your heart. I need your strength today. I need your power because this is too much for me to bear. This is too much for me to handle. You can see that it's very difficult for me to pay my rent. It's very difficult for me to pay my, for my car, even to feed my family. It is even difficult for me to transport myself to work. It is difficult for me to buy clothes to wear. Oh, I'm a crossroad whereby this person offends me every minute, all the time. And you're telling your father in heaven, just like Moses and Aaron did, the right thing to do. But let's see, they continue to do the right thing. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, let's listen to this, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother. And speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, he said, the Lord. And, and it shall give forth, hear what the Lord told Aaron and Moses. And speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. He says, when gather everyone, you go to the rock and do what? And speak. If at that time our Father in heaven is saying, you know, Calm down, you know, calm, calm, just talk in a calm way. 
you know, I remember what those situations, and I, I and I said, I said, look, I hear your grievances, and if that is the problem, you know, we can discuss it. We can we can go ahead and discuss that. You can come to my office and let's have the discussion. Are you saying, well, my brother or sister, can we have this discussion? Can we have this honest discussion? I'm upset, but you know, let's all calm down. Let's have this discussion. Let's do it the right way. And the Lord is talking to you. The Lord has given you instructions on what to do. When you're told, well, you need to cheat the system to get to where to, you want to go. And you're saying, you know, the Lord has spoken to you on what to do. You know, calm. Don't worry, I got control. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help show you the right way to do it. To get to where you're going. The money you're looking for. What you're asking for. You know, our Father in Heaven sends people into our lives for a reason. There is no mistake. If you're a child of God, the Lord sends people to, your, to you. There is no mistake. It is for a reason. And a lot of time we close our eyes to see why God is sending those people to us. And we lose the blessings that God has brought to us. I still, I still got 15 minutes. Praise the Lord. Let's hear again the instruction that God gave. It says, speak. It says, speak. It says, speak. Yea, unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beast to drink. Simple. Speak unto the rock. But let's hear what Moses did. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. Amen. So Moses and Aaron, they allowed anger to creep in at the moment of execution. You are following the Lord. The Lord has said, you know, take this person outside and have a discussion. And you go outside and say, hey, you, you're a stubborn person. You're a cheat. I didn't know that you're that type of person. And you're somebody, this is how your life is. You're not even a child of God as far as I'm concerned. Even though our Father in Heaven has given you instruction to take the brother or sister out and talk have a nice discussion amen or step aside and do something else with the situation that you are in to do something different but at the moment of execution then boom the anger comes in hear what Moses said and that is why we have to be careful when we hear from the Lord when we go we continue we should continue to be prayerful continuously even when you are executing what God has told you to do Sometimes we take the plan of the Lord and execute it wrong. And that is what Moses is about to do right now. He saw the face of the Lord, did everything. But at the point of execution, he said what he said. And, and he said, hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? He didn't call for that. And that was the point of break. Moses allowed himself to get angry at that point. At the point of execution, we have to be very careful. At the point of execution, we have to be very careful. If, I, if it has never happened to you, if it has happened to me before, maybe I have an issue with you in the church or somewhere, and probably in the course of discussion, there's miscommunication. The Lord in heaven has asked us to be calm all the time. Praise the Lord. And then Moses made the mistake. And Moses and Aaron, they gathered the congregation. And Moses lifted up his hand. That is verse 11. And with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank and their beasts. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. Why? 
the Lord didn't tell them to smite the rock. He said, speak to the rock. He said, speak to, at the point of persecution. At the point of persecution. Is that your life? If it is your life, you need to continue to seek the face of the Lord. And, he, and the water came out abundantly. So, and, and, and so let's look at now the judgment of God. Because God gave them. So they did the right thing. The people came and got them angry. They went to God, sought guidance. God gave them guidance, but they now executed it wrong. And he said, and the Lord spake unto Moses, and her, because ye believe me not, disobedient, ye believe me not. Because he said, just speak. Praise the Lord. Because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, before ye shall not, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Amen. They will no longer be able to lead. They will no longer be able to lead. Has the Lord given you a ministry? Has the Lord given you a ministry and with instruction and you refuse to follow the instruction? I will tell you, my brother, the Lord will take away the ministry from you. When you are at the crossroad, look at, at one moment, at one moment with everything Moses did, the Lord took away the, you know, the, the, how much he was going to fill, taking them out to the wilderness and then leading them into the promised land. Is that your life? Or is this going to be your life? Job chapter 3. We've looked at the life of Moses. We're going to look at the life of Job. Is your life like Moses? You come at a crossroad, you disobey God. Or you are going to be like Job. So we're going to be quick. Amen. Job chapter 3 verse 1 to 5. When you are at the crossroad, what do you do? You become desperate. Do you get angry at the point of persecution? Do you get angry? You know, even with our families, you know, you pray and everything, and then at the point of execution. But there's always a way out. There's always a way out. Going back to the Lord and asking for forgiveness. If you've done everything right, and then at the end, you make that mistake, there is always redemption. Job chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Praise the Lord. After this opened Job's mouth and cursed his day, we know what happened to Job. How Job almost lost everything. How Job almost lost. He lost, Job lost everything. You know, in fact, if we look at first verse, chapter 2, verse, uh, verse, um, if we look at verse 2, I mean, later on, on your own time, you can read, if you have not read it before, Job chapter 2, the whole of chapter 2. But if you look at, even his wife asked him, he said, she said, but then said his wife unto him, dost thou still retain thy integrity. Curse God and die. So we, if you read that, you look at the story how Job lost his children, lost uh, his possession. Even God sick himself. Praise the Lord. And so let's, let's, let's hear what Job said after Job, after all the things that's happened. Because of our time, I'm not going to go into that story. After this, open Job's mouth and cursed his day. Amen. He continued. He said, and Job spake and said, let the dead perish wherein I was born. He was in so much pain. Think about the fact that everything is taken away from you. 
your children, your possessions. You become sick. Amen. You know, sickness can also be emotional. You become sick. He, and he said, and the night which he said, let the dead perish wherein I was born. And the night in which it was said, there is a man, child, conceived. He is saying, look, he wants the day to be cursed. He doesn't even want the day to exist. That day, that's how painful it is to him. Let the day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of day terrify it. Praise the Lord. You are so angry. See, I have said here on the puppy that there is nobody to whine and complain to than God. You can go to his presence and say, Father, what have I done to you? Why has this happened to me? You're just talking to your Father in heaven. You're pouring out your pain and anger. There's nothing wrong in doing that. Who best? Who best? Who best can you go and kneel down before and pour your anger and your pain if not God? And that's exactly what Job is doing. He said, even the day that I, I was born, I don't want that day to exist anymore. When at the crossroad, what do you do? When you're at the crossroad, what do you do? You know, if you look at this, he said, and there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And the message came unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the axes feeding beside them. And the side beans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servant with the edge of the sword and only arm escaped. It continued and continued. Amen. Have you been at a crossroad? Have you been at a point whereby almost everything is taken away from you? Your farm, everything. It is difficult. It is difficult to grieve for properties to grieve for his children. And that was why he was praying. He said, let darkness and shadow of death stain that day that he was born. When you are in pain and sorrow and at a crossroad, are you going to be Moses and you get upset and do the wrong thing after talking to the Lord? Or you are going to do the right thing? know losing everything what have you lost you know after that happened to job before he even got he said job had to shave his head he shaved his head and did what he worshiped God when you're at a crossroad do you get angry and he made a testimony. He said, naked did I come from my mother's womb and naked am I going back? He blessed the name of the Lord. So he began with blessing and worshiping God. You know, when it comes to you, things are painful. You fell before the Lord, the eyes of the Lord. And you say, Father, you bless his name. And then now you continue to say, why should this happen to me? You pour out your heart to God. It's fine to do that. Who else? Who else? Let's look at verse 11 and 12. He said, he continued, he said, why did die I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me 
or why the beast that I should suffer. 23 to 25, he continued, Why is light given to a man whose way is he, and whom God had hedged in? Verse 24, For my sign cometh before I eat, and my roaring are poured out like the waters. And then for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet. Yet trouble came. You are at the crossroad, you are telling the Father in heaven, there's nothing wrong. I worship you, I pay my tithes, you know, I evangelize, I'm praying all the time, I'm doing everything, I'm sanctified, the Spirit is in me. Father, why should this happen to me? It's not a sin. The best person to cry to is our Father in heaven. Go and complain and whine to him. Because he's a merciful father. He will hear you and have mercy on you. And that's exactly what Job is doing. Instead of cursing God, he did not. He was talking to his father. You know, he was in pain. He was saying, I don't even want this day to exist again. You know, maybe you have moved to a, for a greener pasture. Or you've changed your job. Why did I even take this job? If my father in heaven knew that I was going to suffer this, this so much, why did he allow this to happen? Why? Why? You're talking to your father. You're talking to your father. You know, in heaven. Job chapter 5. We'll read chapter 5 and we'll conclude. Job chapter 5, we'll read verse, from verse 8. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's see now his reaction. Moses, God told him, well, uh, <clears throat> talk to the rock. He smoothened the rock. But God in heaven told Satan, if you read earlier on, he says, when Satan was going back and forth on earth, he said, I have a child, I go and test him. Go and test him. The Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant? That is chapter 1, verse 8. Has thou considered my servant, Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, and that feareth God and eschewed evil? Amen. And he proved God right. Is that you today? Think about your life. Are you behaving like Moses? Or are you behaving like Job? He cried unto his father. And he said, I will seek unto God. And unto God will I commit my cause. He's not deterred. After telling father, this is what I'm going through. And then he said, he's standing upright. We do great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. He's praising our Father in heaven. And he said, we continue verse 10. Who giveth rain upon the earth, and who seeded waters upon the field, to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. Amen? He disappointed the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And counsel of the four is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and group in the north, noonday as in the night. But he severed the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor had hope and iniquity stopped her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastings. The chastening of the Almighty. He says, Behold, after he prays the Father. So let's look at the sequence of things. Is that your life? You go to the Father, this is too much for me. You complain to the Father in heaven. You know, I don't know why you even gave me this job. And then you say, Father in heaven, I thank you for the job you've given me. That is. You're pouring your heart to your father. If you understand. So the relationship that we have with our fatherly 
earthly fathers on earth is the same with God if you understand God. My father used to sit all of us together. He said, what is your grievance? We talk about your grievances. Everybody prays about it. We find a solution to it. Go to your father. You know, Job went. Complain and complain. But he said, he said, he said, he didn't just, he didn't, he said, behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. He's looking at, say, all the sufferings I'm going, I should be happy. Because God is correcting me. Therefore, despise not that the chastings of the Almighty. For he maketh sore and blinded uh, and, and, and blinded up. He wounded and his hand make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven that shall no evil touch thee. And then he continued, In famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scores of tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be, be afraid of the beast of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the, uh, with the stubbornness, stoneness of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that the tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation. And thou shalt not sin. Thou shalt know also that their seed shall be great, and their offsprings and their grass on earth. But, but like I said, Lord, this we have searched it. So it is, it is. Hear it and know that it is for their good. Amen. He is saying that the chastening from the Lord is for his good. What is your life like today? It should be a life like Moses. We looked at the life of Moses, the instruction God gave him. He followed the first instruction. When trouble came, he sought the face of the Lord. And then at the point of execution, he executed wrong because he was angry at that point. And we saw the punishment that came to him. And then we looked at the life of Job. When the problem came, when everything was taken away from him, he went to the father and told and cried his heart to the father but yet he exalted God and reminded himself of who God is and thanked the Lord for correcting him is that your life today are you like Moses or you're like Job I pray that the Lord will lead you to be like Moses can our pastor please close praise the Lord Call upon the name of the Lord. Now when there's darkness and there's a crossroad to go through, we call upon the name of the Lord. There are leaders of two laws about their talent. And different during that talent, prayer will come. Moses, what is your talent? I'm an obedient one. I listen to him. I obey him. Whatever he says, I will do. To the extent that I said, if your glory will not follow me, I will not go. And God said, my presence will follow you. It is true that this presence I went through the Red Sea. I went through, uh, I, I go through a lot of things. But when we get to the wilderness, prayer comes. And I forget the grace. As a result of this, I couldn't cross the road. Will you remember God? Will you remember what he has done in the past? When that temptation comes. From the little one, from the old one, from the adult, from the young. Joseph, let this one, let it rain in his mind. That no matter what the situation may be, this enjoyment in the palace, 
This is a fine woman. A woman that was rank. When we are talking about beauty, she was there. When we are talking about being, I mean, being rich, she was there. Then what else Joseph named? But when it comes to the crossing the land, between compromising, he led the word of the Lord in and he fled. When it comes to your own time to cross the road, are you going to remember the commandment of the Lord? That shall not compromise. That shall not bow down for any other God before me. Either praises, either money, either to get either to get certificate, either to get money, either to get one promotion or the other. I will either stand by and be like Mo, and be like Joseph and flee. Because of my soul is more important to me. And Job was there. When we are talking about somebody got millions of talent, he was there. He has sheep, he has slaves. He has friends. To the extent that when he becomes so poor, the friend with the way he, he, he affected them. They say, Why? Your affliction is affecting us. Why can't you just blame that God and die? After all, we have been participating in your word. We have been eating from your from, from, from your word. Even the wife came. That's why that this woman has been enduring. He has been enduring. Many enduring endurance that many of our, 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 our we men cannot endure. The woman cannot endure. This woman has been staying there. He didn't say a single word. But he came to a time and the woman said, Job, why this? Why can't you just cause that God? And that? Job, remember, this is a crossroad. And there's nobody to assist me. Even my wife wants to block me down. But he told the woman, he remember God at that crossroads. And what be the resource? The Bible said, the later life of Joe is better than the beginning. If it is you. Are you going to look at that dear man? The, the, the preacher told us today that when they are talking about the richness, David said, when I look at the richness of the, I mean, the, 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 the material of the rich, it's like where I am, who I am. But when I look at their end, I see there is destruction. When you get to that crossroad, and the devil is shining the gold. He's saying, why can't you just bow your head for me? And then you will forget that the same temptation came to Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ, nobody was with him. But he remembered the word of the Lord. And he said, I feel forgotten what the Bible said. That shall not bow down for any other world. If it is you. You say it's just a minute, it's just a second. Many people do it, and that was the end. Will you do the same thing when you get to the crossroad? Call upon the name of the Lord. Ability, the power, grace to able to stand with the Lord when there's a cloud. When the road is becoming creamy and it seems like because it's becoming creamy, you cannot run you cannot run fast you need to take patience call upon the name of the lord you will not get lost trial will come as the other people they disturb moses as job was tempted by his friends as joseph was a counter by delicious food, but he ran away. What if it is you? 
you say this is a great opportunity all what i need is just to go to bad go back to the law and say forgive me are you forgetting the scare the scar will be there call upon the name of the law when i get to the road when i get to the crossroad your grace will be short waiting for me to run away to stay with you in jesus name we pray our mighty father we glorify your name we thank you lord we thank you, Lord, because our Father, you have used, we pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. We continue to use him more in Jesus' name. For every one of us, this is a message when we are in the, in the darkness. And there's nobody, there's no wife, there's no son, there's no member of the church, there's no pastor, there's no reverend. We are just alone. And nobody sees us and nobody will ever know that we have done that thing. But Lord, at that particular crossroad of one second crossing to the other side or stayed with the lord father we ask oh lord the grace that beyond that of joseph we give every one of us in jesus name an ability to obey the word to stand in the world to do not doubt the word to know that the God we are serving is not God of openness, but it's God of secret. That he see open, he see secret. Father, you will give all that grace to know in Jesus' name. Father, we continue to see your truth. And at the end of the race, we will be able to wipe away the tear. And we will see that the journey was did. Even before our husband, before our wife, before our friends, before our enemies, before our masters, before our family that give us name. But the end of us will justify the beginning in Jesus' name. And your name is going to be glorified. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace together. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Will God bless you all.